Welcome everyone to today's presentation where we're going to be talking about funding your graduate education. So for those who are considering going into a, a graduate program somewhere, you know, this is a presentation for you. So before I get started, I do want to introduce myself. My name is Juan Garcia and I'm one of the graduate assistants here at the uh, Student Money Management Center and I will be your presenter for today. So for those who don't know who the Student Money Management Center is, we do offer four main programs to students. The first one being the Financial Readiness Program. This is actually one of my favorite programs because we go to the students uh, on campus and offer them fun and engaging presentations, workshops, tabling events, um, and a whole other um, bunch of you know, engaging activities where you know, our goal is to spread financial literacy. Because we all know coming into college, you know, as we grow older, there's gonna be a lot of financial decisions that we're gonna have to make. And sometimes, you know, talking about our finances can be a bit of a taboo subject for a lot of us. So the goal of our readiness program is to make students feel comfortable talking about these um, taboo subjects, especially specifically financial topics, you know, money. Our second program is a financial wellness program. This one we are famous for. A lot of students come to us for coaching sessions. So we do offer free one-on-one -on -one confidential coaching sessions to students. Um, you know, if a student wants to know, for example, how to budget or how to pay for college or, you know, buying the first ticket items such as a car, um, anything related to any financial literacy topic, students can come talk to us and we can give them advice, the resources that they need in order for them to succeed throughout their college journey here at UNT. Our third program is called the Emergency Assistant Program. This is a loan-based program that we offer students here at UNT um, to help them with any emergency need. So for example, if a student is short on rent for the month, or if they need gas money, grocery, any, you know, including, you know, supplies for school, um, we can help them in that regard. Um, more information can be found on our website at UNT Student Money Management Center if you are interested or if something ever comes up that you need uh, financial assistance on, um, make sure to check out our uh, emergency assistance program. Our first, our fourth, um, program here is our virtual access and program. So this is basically our online presence. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, the previous three programs, there are, you know, focus on, you know, being on campus present, having an on-campus presence, one-on-one -on -one student contact, but we're also strong on our social media presence. So we are very convenient for students, you know, they can use our services at home. So uh, we do have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where you guys can keep up to date with the things that we do in our office. And we also have a YouTube channel where we upload um, our presentations. And we also, again, as I mentioned earlier, we have a website where we also have important dates um, for financial aid, FAFSA, including like worksheets you can download. One of the worksheets is our budgeting worksheet. So if you want to start your budget, there's a free downloadable budgeting worksheet for you guys to use. And you can also find our emergency assistance program application on our website as well. So that's a little bit about us. Moving on to our agenda for today. So we're going to be talking about ways you can fund your graduate program. We're going to talk about cost benefit analysis, uh, forms of funding, uh, we're going to hop into talking about a little bit about FAFSA and then budgeting for graduate school and then wrapping up the presentation with uh, just sharing you sharing with you guys a little bit of my firsthand experience being a graduate uh, student here at UNT. So cost benefit analysis. So I want you to think about these three main um, points here. So career path program costs versus anticipated salary, and anticipated time in school. So let's focus on the career path first. 
So basically, will receiving your degree lead you to the job that you want? Think about that. So it's very important to know uh, what your goals are, you know, your career goals are, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? Um, you know, just deciding these things, evaluating yourself, um, knowing what your goals are is going to help you determine if, you know, going into graduate, you know, graduate program is the right thing for you. So it can be for different people, you know, there's many reasons uh, for going into graduate school. So one, for example, is if you want to tap into a new career path. So let's say, you know, you graduated with a degree in a degree in bachelor's of arts, right? And then you go on, you graduate, you work for a couple of years, and then ultimately you just figure out that this is not the right degree for you, right? Or the right industry that you want to work on for the rest of your life. So with that being said, you know, a master's program going or considering going to a master's program, getting a master's degree can be a, an opportunity for, you know, people who aren't satisfied with their original degree, they can go into a master's degree or obtain a master's degree in a different field. And, you know, ultimately that can open up more financial opportunities for them in the future. Or if you're just pursuing a higher uh, education degree for, um, you know, more job opportunities for a higher pay, higher wage, then again, you know, considering going into a graduate program can be your thing. So again, um, it all comes down to you, what your goals are, how do you see yourself in the uh, next upcoming years, and what are ultimately your career goals, where you want to be, where you want to work at. So uh, again, um, it all comes down to, uh, you know, your expectations. Moving on to program cost versus anticipated salary. So first, investigate the true cost of your education. So whenever you're considering going to a graduate school, uh, costs are going to be a lot different from attending, you know, undergrad. So a couple of things to think about, you know, there will be no more student living. So you won't, you know, live on campus, of course. You'll have to consider paying rent for off-campus housing. Uh, unless, you know, some universities do offer graduate students the opportunity to stay on campus. But, you know, ultimately, it's very common for those who are anticipating going to a master's program you know, it's very common for graduate students to stay off campus. So just keep that in mind. Um, so you're going to have to consider pay your rent. So with that being said, finding an off-campus housing, you're going to have to do your apartment research, compare prices with apartments, but uh, you're also going to have to consider where you're, you're wanting to go to school at. So if it's going to be in Austin, it's going to be in Dallas, Denton, Houston, you're also going to have to factor in, you know, um, you know, that these places have a different cost of living. So um, with that being said, it's going to come down to you to research that um, and, you know, start your apartment search early enough for you to have a spot because uh, we know that apartments do, do tend to, you know, fill up very quick. So uh, the sooner you start your apartment search and choose the right apartment that's, you know, the right, that fits your budget, um, you know, the more secure that you're going to be, you know, going into your master's program. A good resource that I do recommend if you are considering going to master's or the graduate school, uh, specifically here at UNT, is to go and talk to the UNT off-campus housing resource. Uh, this department offers or they can help you uh, research the right apartment for you. They show you different rates, different, um, you know, amenities that off-campus apartments offer students. So ultimately, this department can help you find what you need or the apartment that best fits your budget. Other things to think about is, uh, will you, you know, you'll need to think about transportation, right? So are you driving a car? Are you going to be commuting to school? Or, you know, if you have a job too, if you're going to be employed or, you know, working while you're going to grad school, you're going to have to commute. So think about the gas money that you're going to be spending, you know, weekly. How much are you going to allocate for gasoline? 
or you know if you're planning on taking you know uh transportation public transportation if you're going to be taking the bus if you're going to be taking uber you know lyft things like that you also have to consider how much is that going to cost and how often are you going to have to um, take or use these services um, but unless, you know, it all depends on um, what your master's program is going to offer you because some master's program uh, do have a full online service where you can just take online classes. And for example, with me, um, I am in the MBA program in the business uh, school, in the School of Business here at UNT. And um, all my classes are offered online. So the only um, thing that I have to worry about is just paying for gas. Uh, just to go to work here on campus. So just consider that. Also, you'll need to think about your necessities. So again, it all comes down to, uh, you know, where you want to go to school at and how much is that cost of living going to be? You know, necessities include groceries, um, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, again, it all comes down to evaluating yourself. Uh, just make sure you don't forget about that. Now, uh, Let's think about your anticipated salary. You know, how much, it, you know, how am I going to pay for these things, right? What is a right salary that's going to help me pay for all of these expenses once I know what, are my, what my expenses are? So think about, thinking about all of these expenses will help you determine, you know, the, what salary you want to expect, you know, to expect from a job, right? That's going to help you cover these expenses. So in the following slides, I'm going to talk about a couple of options you can look into. But again, ultimately, going into graduate school, as my own you know, experience, we do have more responsibilities of you know, just paying out of pocket. And paying out of pocket, you, know, you have to find um, options out there, you know, whether it's scholarships, grants, um, other types of employment. You're going to have to be responsible with how you um, find new sources of income instead of depending on, you know, grants as, you know, you were used to being an undergrad student. So if you got grants. So also the last thing to consider is anticipated time in school. So analyze how long you will be in school for. It. So is it going to be a year or two or even six years? It's, you know, Something that I recommend you to do as, you know, firsthand experience is that I do recommend you to take your time as a graduate student because uh, if you think about it, being in grad school has different expectations versus being an undergrad. I know, for example, with me, I have new academic expectations for, uh, you know, just being in the MBA program. They, gave, they expect me to, uh, you know, everything's more professional overall. And grades, I cannot make a C. So again, it just depends on what master's programs that you go into and what their expectations are, which you will know as you know you apply and you go through the process of becoming a grad student. You will know what those expectations are. But I know for mine is that uh, everything's more professional, professional etiquette, super important, um, more expectations when you turn in your assignments, things like that. So you don't want to overwhelm yourself and take so many classes while you're, you know, let's say if you're working while you're working, you don't want to overwhelm yourself because at the end of the day, if you, if your master's program doesn't allow you to make uh, C's, like, you know, a C, then you may want to consider, you know, taking what, one or two classes at um, per semester, which is, of course, going to extend the time of your graduation date. But again, take your time. Um, you know, know that you already have an undergrad, undergraduate degree, but just take your time getting your master's degree because ultimately it's very, very um, rewarding once you graduate. But just take your time, be patient. Now, let's talk about some fellowships. So, some funding options. So, we have internal funding options. So, what do these mean? So some graduate programs provide funding for all students, while others only give funding to top perform, you know, academic performing students. So again, you know, as they say, if you make good grades in school, it is rewarding ultimately because, you know, as you go into college or even your master's program, if you do well academically, they will reward you with scholarships 
free money. So just make sure if you're still an undergrad student, stay on top of your grades. Uh, and again, it just depends on the program, the graduate program that you go in the school that offers that graduate program. It's going to depend on what they offer um, to you. So also meet with the program coordinator one-on-one uh, -on -one to discuss, you know, any opportunities um, that they can offer you regarding, you know, scholarships, grants. So I recommend you to talk to your academic advisor um, or the dean of students from your college uh, that you're applying for to go into the master's program just to see if they have any scholarships that's specific for your major. Because um, sometimes they do have those, but uh, it's just, you know, they get forgotten or a lot of students don't know about those until they talk to their you know, program coordinators and they see, you know, the options that are out there for them. So keep that in mind. Moving on to external funding. So these are primarily for master's students or, you know, doctoral students. So uh, this is money that is from, you know, not nonprofit organizations mostly, but also from the government. Um, these can be very competitive. So we cannot stress how important it is to apply as early as you can. Because the earlier that you apply, the more opportunities that you're going to have financially in the long run as you go complete your master's program. So uh, money at the graduate level, level is rarely referred to as a scholarship. Uh, it's based on merit more so than a need. And then again, um, as we mentioned earlier, watch your time. Uh, apply early. Often, you know, funding is a first come, first serve basis, especially, you know, especially if you're applying for a scholarship uh, at, at the university. Uh, you know, the sooner that you apply, uh, the more uh, chances that you're going to get that money. Because, you know, if you're applying for a scholarship from the University of North Texas, they do tend to, tend to run out of money. So just keep that in mind. And that goes the same for every university. It's a first come, first serve basis. Also, take careful note of how long the funding is available for. So, for example, um, you know, it happened to me once. I thought that the scholarship was for, like for my whole two-year, um, you know, master's program, but I came to find out it was for only for a year. So, as I started my second year as a graduate student, I was expecting to get that money, but it wasn't on my account. So, I was short on uh, money, so I had to pay out of pocket, but you know, it comes, it came down to me being responsible and just um, noticing, you know, these small details that, you know, this scholarship that I had was only for a year, which I didn't know, but it was on the scholarship uh, contract or whatever. But again, it's important to, you know, take careful note of how long these funding sources are available for you because you don't want to be, you know, short on money like I did, right? So, uh, and then lastly, write down all important dates for different programs, and you can use a multitude of things, Excel sheets, planners, desktops, you know, your computer, calendars, your phone, you can use Siri. I use Siri a lot to remind me a lot about my deadlines, due dates, things like that. So uh, there's really no right or wrong way to uh, be responsible and, you know, take note of those important dates. Now we're going to talk about some funding options uh, for you guys. So the first ones are teaching and research assistantships. So it is exactly as it sounds. So uh, it's basically, you know, teaching, you know, in return for your teaching services, you will receive money in return, right? Common sense. So these are reserved for students in research based fields. So some master's programs do require you to be a full-time student in order to, uh, you know, be considered for a teaching assistantship. So just make sure you check in with your uh, academic coordinator uh, to see if you fall under this category. So again, you know, it's important to talk to your academic advisor uh, for this, um, just to make sure you don't want to fall behind or you don't want to miss this opportunity for you to get financial assistance. Um, Again, you know, some some of these teaching assistantships can offer a tuition reimbursement or reduction. So don't miss out on that opportunity. So a couple of on campus employment options you guys can look into. And again, um, it's going to vary between, you know, the schools that you choose. They are going to have different rules, different jobs. 
um, different pays. You're just going to have to do your research on that. So this is just uh, in general information just to give you a guidance. So the first one is our graduate assistantships. So I am currently a graduate assistant, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation. So with this one, if you're interested in it, uh, you work with different departments. So depending, a good tip that I will give you guys if you're considering being a graduate assistant is that um, think about it in the long run. So for example, I'm a business major and I went into the business, you know, the MBA program at the business school. So it makes sense for me to be a graduate assistant at the department, you know, at the business school departments, right? So, uh, or, you know, a graduate assistant job that has, you know, business experience that I'm going to, you know, receive from it, right, that I'm going to attain. So uh, whatever your major is, just find a graduate assistantship that, you know, uh, concise with your major. And that way you'll get experience and, you know, it's good for your resume overall. So, and also I do want to mention that being a graduate assistant, uh, it's super flexible. It's so flexible. Your supervisors know that ultimately you're here to get a degree. So they tend to be very flexible when it comes down to, you know, finals, midterms, you know, if you need a day off, they are very flexible enough to give you those day off, those days off that you need in order to succeed academically, of course. So again, they're super flexible, have a flexible schedule. Um, and a, the most important part of this is that you get a tuition reimbursement offered to you. And it's it's very good here at UNT, and I'm pretty sure it's very good at other universities. If you consider going to another university, you know, free money is always good, you know, always good in your pocket. So just keep in mind, you do get a tuition reimbursement, and it's very, very hefty here at UNT. Also, if you're not interested in a GA position, you can also, um, you know, work a full-time job if you want more money. Uh, or if you just want to get the full-time experience of having an, uh, a job like that, you know. Uh, but if you're interested in receiving some sort of benefit, you know, it can require a certain amount of time um, that you have to work for the school before you even get considered, uh, you know, offered a discount or a, some sort of, you know, tuition reimbursement, just depending on the job that you work for, any benefits that they offer, they may require you to, you know, work for a certain amount of time. And but uh, a con about working full time, which is not bad, but uh, as long as you're good balancing work life versus academic life versus personal life, you'll be great. But uh, just keep in mind that working a full time job anywhere in general, um, you know, they tend to be not as flexible with your schedule. So if you need time off for final things like that, they may not be as flexible. Whereas, you know, graduate assistantship or student assistantships, you know, they offer that flexibility, full-time employment may not offer those, um, that much flexibility, flexibility for your schedule. Moving on to student assistantships. So these are even more flexible compared to graduate assistantships and full-time job positions. They're more flexible, um, but however, they are less likely to provide any sort of financial assistance uh, for your school. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about scholarships. So again, as you know, it's exactly as it sounds. Uh, basically, you know, in recognition of your academic potential, your department will provide you with money. So there's two types of scholarships. There's internal, which again, the goal, uh, internal scholarships are offered by the university, the school that you're applying for. Um, you know, you can look at the school's website. I know UNT has a scholarship website where they list all the scholarships that they offer, depending on your major. Um, and again, you can, you know, you can reach out to your program to find specific scholarships that they offer for you. Um, something to keep in mind is uh, often uh, scholarships, you know, the funding level is often less compared to undergrad. So that's, that's the sad part about being a graduate student. They make it harder on us, but, you know, it's more, Again, as long as you're smart or you prepare yourself ahead of time, um, you'll say you'll stay ahead of the game. So um, moving on to external scholarships, these are scholarships that you get outside of the school. So from nonprofits, from your high, your high school, from church, 
Uh, I know McNair Resources. I believe that's a website you can look into where you can search up, you know, external scholarships that can benefit you and all, uh, throughout your graduate school career. Uh, and also, you know, search online for outside funding. Uh, it's important, again, to start early because the earlier you start, again, you know, the more financial opportunities that you have open for you in the future. Now let's talk about FAFSA. So I do want to emphasize that FAFSA is open now. They open every October. So just be sure to fill out that FAFSA form because you do not want to miss out on any money. Uh, unless, of course, you want to pay out of pocket, but who wants to do that, right? So FAFSA, again, it's now open, so make sure you apply. All graduate students are considered as independent. So uh, the help that you receive will be based off your finances. So, you know, sometimes FAFSA may ask about your parents' income randomly, but they will not use that test to make your funding help. Uh, so overall, just make sure to keep your grad school, you know, your grad school start date in mind. Like you have to know when you want to start grad school uh, in order to prevent you from missing important deadlines, not only from FAFSA, but also from the school that you're going to apply for. Or that you know that you want to pursue your master's in. All right. Well, that being said, let's talk about types of loans. So specifically, we're going to talk about federal student loans. So as you see here, federal student loans have one of the lowest interest rates, and they have even dropped to the lowest interest rates ever. So as you see here, the 2020-2022 academic year rates for undergraduate loans are 2.75%, for graduate loans are a little slightly higher, they are 4.30%, and then the parent plus loan or plus loan grants, are, I mean loans, not grants, uh, take that back, they are 5.30%. So a couple of loans that you need to know about or you're probably familiar already with since you've made it this far and are considering going to graduate school, we have subsidized loans, which basically, uh, unfortunately, they're mostly available for undergraduate students. And basically, subsidized loans are loans that you take out, uh, which uh, where the government pays the interest rates while you're in school. However, after you graduate, you do have a six month grace, per grace period until you find a job where you're like uh, financially stable enough to pay back those loans, and that's when you, you know, you're going to start repaying. Uh, interest and repaying the loans back for subsidized loans. Now, unsubsidized loans are loans that you take out, but as soon as you take out the loans, interest rates start accruing. So these are most commonly used by or available for graduate students. Um, but again, you know, I, I do believe that they have the same um, expectation where once you graduate, they do give you a six months grace period until you have to start paying back. But the only difference between subsidized and unsubsidized loans is that with unsubsidized loans, you have to start paying interest as soon as you take out the loan. Now, the last one is our graduate plus or the parent or grad plus loan. These are tend, you know, they tend to have higher interest rates, but they allow you to pay for school if there's, you know, little access to funding resources. So for example, if you find yourself not, you know, after taking out uh, an unsubsidized loan, for example, and it's not enough to cover your tuition fees, you may want to consider taking out a, a graduate plus loan uh, just to give you that financial relief that you need. But again, it all comes down to you, what your goals are, and just determining what your financial situation is. Finally, I know we talked about funding resources and options you guys can look into, but it all, that's half of which, you know, 50% of, you know, what you need to be successful in grad school. The other 50 comes in, you, in like, the other 50% is how smart are you with your money? And something that my supervisor always tells us is that if you're smart about spending, if you have a plan on spending your money, you will never be broke. So if you don't want to be broke, start budgeting. Start budgeting. Because budgeting 
in general overall is going to help you find that balance that you need between you and your money. It's going to help you make smarter decisions in life, not only through your college careers, but also in the long run when you're when you start, you know, buying your first home, buying your first car, if you're planning on having a family, sending your uh, your kids to school, you know, it's going to make you, uh, you know, more financially responsible. So budgeting for grad school. First step is, of course, to list all of your income. So if you're going to take out loans, if there's going to be family contributions, uh, or if you're going to be employed while you're in graduate school, list all of those income sources out. And then, of course, list all of your expenses. And that comes with knowing where you want to go to school at, how much is a cost of living going to be, tuition, um, things like that. So list all of those expenses out. And again, you know, simple math, income minus expenses, and that's going to determine if you have a deficit or a surplus uh, in your budget. Now, if you have a surplus, great. If you have a deficit, brings us to step two, evaluate where changes need to be made. So if you have, you know, once you list out your income and expenses, you put your plan to action, uh, but, you know, find yourself having a deficit, it's all right. You know, all you need to do is go back and adjust you know, make changes where changes need to be made. You know, sometimes in life in general, we're going to have to make some sacrifices to obtain the things that we need. Uh, so, you know, you may want to cut out eating out or buying fast food, going to the bars, you know, having fun with your friends like that. You may want to cut out some of these things that aren't necessarily going to help you succeed in graduate school. So again, evaluate where changes need to be made, put that plan back into action, And if that plan is working great for you, follow through and maintain the budget. If you follow through, it's going to become a habit. And once that habit, you know, occurs, you're going to start making smart financial decisions and you're never going to be broke. So to sum up this presentation or to wrap up the presentation, I do want to give a little, um, a little bit of, um, about my own experience being a graduate student here at UNT. So, um, again, you know, as I, before I became a graduate student, I kind of researched the schools first and foremost, what school was I interested in? So I was interested in, I believe only three schools, UT, Texas State, and UNT. But after doing my research, I looked into how much the school was going to be. And I know some schools do offer a tuition estimate I know UNT does offer that. If you go on their website or if you Google UNT tuition estimator, uh, they'll bring you to the website. And I believe all you have to do is like type in, you know, the classes you're expecting to take, you know, after reviewing your master's, um, you know, course program. Um, And overall, it's just going to estimate around how much you're going to be expecting to pay for your um, master's program. And that gave me a little bit of overview of where where I actually wanted to go to school because I had a set amount of money that I wanted to spend. And, you know, of course, I realized that for me, UT was a little bit too expensive. Um, so uh, it was between Texas State or UNT. But ultimately, um, just finding out the cost and the cost of living really helped me determine and solidify my decision of going to the school that I went to to get my graduate degree. So that's that. The second is interview uh, interview the program. So I know some graduate programs do require uh, graduate candidates to interview with the program. So it all just depends on the program that you're applying for in the school. Again, they have different requirements, but it's up to you to do that research and reach out to the program coordinator to determine if you can do the interview program or not. I know for me, I didn't have to do any interview programs or there wasn't any interview program that I had to do. Uh, I believe all I had to do with mine was to um, get reference letters from four different people and write an essay. But again, it just depends on the program that you're going to go into. They just have different requirements. And then know the dates. That's a very important part of, you know, when you're considering going to graduate school is knowing the dates. And again, it all comes down to knowing when you want to start graduate school. But once you know when you want to start graduate school, you need to keep up to date with, uh, you know, deadlines, 
um, things like that. FAFSA deadlines to turn in um, applications for certain schools. They're different. So just be sure you know when you want to gra uh, attend graduate school. That way you don't miss out on these deadlines because I know some schools have different um, graduate school application deadlines that you need to consider. And then lastly, reach out to past members of the program. So I know for me, I had a couple of friends that went to UNT um, and Texas State and UT Austin, but I know uh, another reason why I went to U UNT was because uh, all of my friends that went to UNT said that UNT really does care about helping the student. So uh, they were all graduate assistants and they had that tuition reimbursement program that UNT offers. So, um, and just getting that knowledge, those insights really help you feel better about your decision. So make sure if you know somebody in college or reach out to your program coordinator and see if they can get you in touch with one of these graduate students just to get insights on how their experience is and what things you need to get, um, you need to consider, you know, before going to the graduate program. And that's a wrap. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope, uh, you know, you gain a lot of great insights. And if you have any questions about any of these slides, feel free to reach out to us through phone, through email, or visit us at Chesna Hall 115. Um, and we also have, again, as I mentioned, uh, social media accounts. So make sure to follow us um, to keep in touch with the things that we do in our office. And, you know, if you want to watch one of our presentations, um, make sure to tune into our YouTube channel. Again, my name is Juan Garcia. Thank you all for watching and have a nice day.